I'm Tim of Goffberg and welcome to the world of Omega. Today I will be your guide to the functions and care of your Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Dark Side of the Moon. Now this is an automatic winding timepiece that can nevertheless be manually wound by taking the crown in its first position flush to the case and turning it 30 to 40 times in a clockwise direction. This will give you sufficient energy to start the movement and even if the chronograph is stationary you can see the seconds hand, constant seconds, moving at 9 o'clock. Winding 30 to 40 turns will also give you sufficient power reserve buffer that the watch can dependably continue to wind itself and stay energized beyond that point. Now once you've wound the watch 30 to 40 times, you can set it, set the date, put it on the wrist, it will continue to energize itself. But if you wish to wind up to the maximum rated power reserve of approximately 60 hours, simply continue turning the crown in a clockwise direction. The bridal style mainspring is designed to slip to relieve any excess tension. By design, you cannot accidentally overwind the watch. Moreover, because the bridle does make a subtle snick or tick or click when it slips, you can hear when the watch is fully wound. Now at that point, you can set the date and set the time precisely against a reference time. The best way to do this is to use the hacking seconds function. While we wait for the seconds hand to reach the index at 60, note that you can jump the hour hand while setting your travel time as you jump international date zone, east or west. So you can set the watch without actually stopping the movement as you jump between time zones. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stop the watch when the seconds hand reaches 60 by pulling it out to the second to tent. I missed by a little bit, but you will stop your seconds hand precisely at 60. At that point, when you use the hacking seconds or the setting function, everything moves in sync. You can see hours and minutes now move together. It's not merely the time zone function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and I'm going to find an accurate reference such as an atomic clock set to my time zone. I'm going to set my watch to the exact same hour as the atomic clock set to my time zone and then forward one minute ahead. When the atomic clock catches up, that is my reference matches my watch as set to the second minute and hour, I'm going to push that crown back in. I'm going to restart the movement. Now I've synchronized to a reference time. Now the watch also features a chronograph. You start it with the pusher at 2 o'clock. You stop it with that pusher. You can also resume timing by pressing the pusher again, but you need to ensure this sequence when resetting. If you start, so shall you stop. And then, when the chronograph is no longer running, reset. Start, stop, and reset. Attempting to reset while the chronograph is still running will crash the movement and cause dire consequences for the machine within. Now, it's also important to note that the watch features a tachymeter scale. In conjunction with the chronograph, you can use this to gauge the speed of an object over a set distance, for instance, a race car over a standing kilometer. Start the chronograph when your reference object passes the beginning or the start point of that measured distance, and when, for instance, your race car passes the end of the kilometer, stop the chronograph and then read the speed, being mindful of your correct units off of the tachymeter scale. Now there are a number of areas with respect to the handling of your watch that you should keep in mind. Water, temperature, magnetism, and shock. Let's discuss water first. Though the watch is water resistant to 50 meters, you can see it's engraved on the case back, nevertheless leather, remember, underneath your strap, it is never water resistant. It's a porous natural material that will degrade rapidly in the presence of moisture. So keep it remote from splashes while washing one's hands or inadvertent rainstorms or simply ensure the watch is on a water resistant band prior to risking exposure to moisture. When you are taking the watch into water, it's important to note that it is safe to have the chronograph running. That is, you can have the chronograph operating, but you cannot function. You cannot select, you cannot restart, you cannot pull the crown out to set or turn it to wind. Avoid accidental drowning. Disuse all of the functions of your watch, not just while it's submerged, but when there's even water on the case, as attempting to use any function of a wet watch can bypass the seals and introduce water to the interior. Just as you can avoid accidental drowning, remember, 
You should have your watch water tested on an annual basis at an authorized service center per Omega because water resistance, unlike the physical features of a watch, is not a static quality. As lubricants age and seals degrade, over time your watch will be relatively less water resistant. Therefore, test annually at an authorized service center. Also, have your watch comprehensively checked for precision and condition, but more on that in a moment. Let's talk a little bit about temperature. The components of the movement, as well as the lubricants contained within, do not like extreme temperatures. Omega recommends keeping the watch secure from temperatures exceeding 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. Keep it secure as well from low temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Now, though the watch does have robust resistance to magnetism thanks to the silicon hairspring, Omega advises that only the Meta certified master chronometers can be considered completely amagnetic to over 15,000 Gauss. Therefore, keep the watch secure from the most powerful magnetic flux densities, such as those created by professional medical MRI equipment. With respect to shock, the minimum impact on your watch may be imprecise timing. The maximum effect may be physical damage. Although the watch does feature a free-sprung balance with a full balance bridge and exclusive in-house shock protection systems, nevertheless, the most concussive sports such as golf, tennis, and batting, firearms marksmanship, or the riding of ATVs and mountain bikes should be avoided while wearing the watch. Moreover, the ceramic case is extremely scratch resistant, effectively to the same degree as the sapphire crystal. But just as a sapphire crystal can be chipped or fractured if struck hard against something like metal, concrete, marble, or brick, so too can ceramic be fractured. It's important to avoid hard blows against hard surfaces with both crystal and ceramic case. Ultimately, per Omega, a fine mechanical timepiece will require a comprehensive service every four to five years. It's best to have total condition checked as a precaution during the annual water test at an authorized service center. If necessary, a comprehensive service will include everything from replacement of damaged external parts or strap to restoration of factory rated water resistance to cleaning, oiling, and adjustment of the movement for precision and performance. This should be performed solely at an Omega authorized service center or the factory itself as these agencies exclusively have the trained personnel, specialized equipment and tools, and original Omega factory replacement parts to ensure the value of your watch as both an instrument and as an investment. Moreover, only these agencies are able to back labor and parts invested with an Omega factory service warranty valid for two years. Finally, visit our website at govbergwatches.com and call, text, or email our experts who will be happy to walk you through every phase of the usage, care, and ownership of this or any Omega timepiece.